I think people would want to know you went bare knuckle against the swan, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This notorious dude. And you didn't even put up a guard. No, no. What happened to you? I had my um, my lip was obviously split, nose broke, and my ear was split in half. I'd that glued back together, like I said. Oh my gosh. The um, I took the punch of the night. So everyone said he hit me with the punch of the night. I, I walked onto a left straight. And it hit me in my chin, but then as it turned my neck, I had like a, a fracture in my larynx. Oh my god! So gosh. it slept me straight away, and I still got back up. And like all the lads, I heard all the travel lads going, "Yeah, well, you know, that was a horse. You wouldn't get back up." How's he got, you know, like, <laughs> that like, was like horse. yeah. When when I tell you, you take this thing and you're gone within five seconds. Right. You smoke it. You smoke it. So it's like wrapped up in. You don't smoke it with tobacco. You smoke it with something else. Um, and it's basically, I believe, very very similar. But stronger to ayahuasca, which for people who don't know, and if you don't that know, the frog. that's the frog, the toad. Ooh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so like I that. think it's stronger than the toad. And 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 what ayahuasca was, it was used in the um, like South America, I think, yeah. um, and has been used for many thousands of years in okay. ritual rituals and things like that because of the experience that it gives you. Unfortunately, on this day, um, I woke up um, quarter past six in the morning. And I can still remember everything now, like the, the smell changes as I come through the rooms in my head um, mm. and everything. So I came down the stairs, um, came into the front room. Uh, there was a smell, like um, a musky kind of smell, not a nice smell. Okay. And some, this is still, it just didn't feel right. The whole, the, the, the fear, everything was horrible. Was, I can't explain it. I've gone into the living room. Now, I saw my brother-in-law with my nephew next to him. Okay. And my niece is on his in his um, on his armpit here, obviously where he was feeding her. My nephew's looked at me and says, um, "He said, Jack, there's something wrong with Lola." All right, Jack, Jack Burnett. That's it, man. You got it right. Now. <laughs> got it. I got yeah, it. Yeah. You made it here. Yeah. And um, eventually, a little bit late today. <laughs> Sorry, mate. That's my bad. No, no, it's fine. You're from Birmingham. Yep. And you travelled all the way down this morning, pretty much. Yeah, or, pretty much. Yeah? Well, I travelled into Chelmsford last night. Okay. And that's travelling from Chelmsford then into okay. Eden this morning. So, if yeah, for people who don't know the geography there, that's literally the other side of London. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. I didn't know that either till today. So. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's cool, man. You made it here. And um, I think one of the first things to note today is that this isn't an, an automotive podcast because... I do a lot of the automotive stuff, but also I delve into other things when people have got interesting stories and, um, yeah, stories that I, I think are either inspiring or, you know, should be shared. Okay. And and I think your story is is like that, like, Amazing. you know. So, um, yeah, we, we're going to try to go through this. Um, it is quite delicate at parts. So thank you for, for coming no on problem. and, you know, uh, sharing this with us. And, um, yeah, I mean... Massive shout out to Ants, Ants yeah, Roberts too. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out to Ants Big because uh, yeah. he's a, he's a wicked guy. And for people who don't know about Ants, he's he's come on a podcast before and he shared his story. He's got a crazy story, and um, he put me on to yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, do you want to kind of do it like a brief intro to yourself before we get into like you know talking about your story? Yeah, that's fine. Um, so obviously, my name is Jack Burnett. Um, I'll speak about actually what happened, but briefly. Mm -hmm. I lost my niece four, ye four years ago. Um, she was only two weeks old, and my sister had tried to raise money for a cuddle cut, mm -hmm. and that was four years ago. Okay. She didn't raise hardly any money at all. I think there was like 200 and something pound raised, and no one really cared. Really no, not, no, not didn't people care, but there wasn't enough attention on it. Got you. So the, during these four years, there's obviously been, it's been, um, it's been hard, so there's been spates in mental health hospitals with my sister and stuff and just genuinely just struggling as a family to um, piece it all together and yeah. um, just try and fix it so and then after that had happened I'd um, suddenly thought oh I need to do something to raise money here Yeah, but I need to do something extreme I can't just okay. do a hundred laps in a swimming pool or yeah, do yeah, a yeah, run yeah. Yeah. so I thought I'm just going to go all out Okay. so that's where the journey began that's where and that's where now I'm on I'm on my second bare knuckle fight July the 30th and then got fights booked yeah. everywhere so but I've got to say like, I know like jumping to the bare knuckle boxing thing is like quite, kind of like towards the end of the story I, I, I'd assume mm -hmm. but that's mad bro bare knuckle boxing yeah but, that's come, but look at your reaction yeah so when I said I'm going to jump in the ring and yeah. fight bare knuckle purely to raise money for cuddle cuts and not take anything personally everyone was like hey what, what? that's mad yeah that's mad though is it usually like um is that because it's usually feuds or it's it's what, what's what's the score because like it's as close to street fighting mm -hmm. or raw fighting uh, mm -hmm. i guess as raw as a fight can be yeah. to, to to well i mean compared to boxing 
Like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's it's like the extreme level. Even it's over MMA, right? Because mm. there's some sort of a, a glove, although it's a light glove. You still got a hand. glove. But, bro, yeah, to, to, to do bare knuckle boxing, bro. And you had no, like, kind of previous fight experience or anything no, like no, that No, not in the ring. No, no, no. Did you know a lot about bare knuckle boxing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All of my friends are bare Well, I'd say all of them. That's a bit of an exaggeration. But a good four of them are. Oh, really? British title holders, world title holders. So Easy. I'm around it all. Okay. But I'd never trained or competed in it. That's mad. Exactly, yeah, exactly. But that's what I wanted. I wanted someone to go, yeah, that's mad. Like, people jump out of planes, that's mad. But you don't get that much attention. People run however many miles or they'll travel Britain on a bike. I yeah. thought, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it, man. I think there's something in standing in a ring in front of loads of people and then it's just you mm -hmm. and the other fighter. Bro, that takes a lot of confidence, bro. Yeah. Like, and a lot of drive because anything can happen in that ring, especially bare knuckle, bro. Anything, Do you know what I mean? Bro, anything, man. I had to have my ears glued back together. My throat was had a fracture in my larynx, like the big, big, big injuries. Yeah, yeah. That's but, mad. But it's for my knee, so like the drive is massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like when yeah. I was on that walkout, when I was in that ring, I, yeah, yeah. There's an opponent there. He's gonna punch me, and I'm punching back. But primarily, it was about my knees. So that's all I had in my head. Like tunnel vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the way my PTSD works, it's, I can trigger it, so I can make it okay. worse than it is sometimes. And on the wow. fight day, I know it sounds weird, and everyone's probably gonna be going, "What's this guy on about?" But I triggered my PTSD worse, so that. Okay. On that day, I was in a different mode, mate. That, Got you. That complete tunnel vision. Complete, just thinking about my niece and That's mad. got a job done. That's mad. Okay, all right, cool. So we've kind of alluded to um, your, your story and, and certain things in it. And I think it, it's probably best to take it back to the beginning. Okay. Um, yeah, share it with us. Like, take us through, like, from start to, to finish how, how, how and what happened. Bro, I'll take you back. So um, uh, the, the incident... Um, started what happened on the seventh uh, of the sixth, two thousand eighteen. Um, I just finished. Um, do I was in, I'm remanded for something. Um, I was staying at my sister's. I split with my uh, my mother to my children at the time. Um, I had a two week old niece, Lola, um, and at the time there were not no one was struggling with the fees, but obviously because it's a baby, sometimes my brother in law would wake up and feed her downstairs, and then other times they'd have her upstairs and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Unfortunately, on this day. Um, I woke up um, quarter past six in the morning and I can still remember everything, oh, like the, the smell changes as I come through the rooms in my head um, mm. and everything. So I came down the stairs, um, came into the front room, uh, there was a smell, like um, a musky kind of smell, not a nice smell. Okay. And some, this is still, it just didn't feel right. The whole, the, the, the fear, everything was horrible. Was, I can't explain it. I've gone into the living room. Now, I saw my brother-in-law with my nephew next to him. Okay. And my niece is on his in his um on his armpit here, obviously where he was feeding her. My nephew's looked at me and says, um, he said, Jack, there's something wrong with Lola. Mm -hmm. So because it was first thing in the morning, everything with my head was all pickled anyway. You know, it was your first yeah, wake yeah, up. Yeah, I hadn't been course. to the toilet yet or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um so I tried to um try to Get Lola, and she was. It was obvious she was. It was obvious she was deceased. Um, I've tried wow. to get her. My brother-in-law's woke up at the same time. Okay. Um, can you imagine? I, I, I've got my nephews awake. Yeah. How old's your nephew? Okay. Sorry to stop you there. No, it's okay. My my nephew Dylan was. He was seven at the time. Okay. Um, Cohen would have been five. No, Co no, Noah would have been five. Cohen would have been two. And I've got. So I've now got. My two youngest nephews watching the TV. This is quarter past six in the morning, watching the TV. My sister on this sofa is asleep. Okay. My brother-in-law here, like I said, has got Lola. And next to him is my oldest nephew. Got you. So then there's mad panic now. My, my brother's woke up. I'm saying she's not breathing, she's not breathing. And it was a bit weird, yeah, because when there's children around anywhere, you always try and... I know this is going to sound crazy, isn't it? but you always you don't want kids to hear anything or know what's going on. No, so of course. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I'm trying to deal with Rob waking up, dealing with what he's done. My two nephews, I've now they're, they're all looking around. My nephew that obviously realizes what's going on. He's in hysteric tears. And he, that's a five-year-old of it. He was five, Se seven, seven. seven year old. So he, he kind of he's old enough to take in what's going on, which is mm -hmm. again a shame, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, yeah. massive shame. Yeah. Like, that, that, that touches me. That does. Yeah, yeah. That, that because yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he was sat there. And it turns out like he he would have been sat there for like an hour with her disease. So so like, oh, like, I'm like, he, that breaks my heart. That's massive. Yeah, really, massive. Yeah. So. There was, I had to then wake my sister up. She kind of come around and I'm waking up. Now, now, can you imagine being my sister? So yeah, yeah. she's waking up. I'm going. Lola's not. She's not breathing. She's and the, the baby's in my arms. And it was, it was just, it was horrible. 
Um, an incident then happened with me and my brother-in-law that I'm not proud of and I don't, don't think I really want to mention. We then, um, the police and the ambulance and everything turn up. And um, and then um, they take my sister and Lola to the children's hospital. Okay. Um, I had to then follow and, and, then, and then that's kind of where we get to. Okay. Where we are. Um, it was heartbreaking. It was yeah, bro. Listen, I, w- I just want to say, bro, you're already you're you're a brave person for you know sharing this. I know it's not easy. I can tell it's not easy. So just take take your time to it's it's it's, it's no rush with it, and you know just feel free to if you don't want to go into too much detail, mm-hmm. you don't have to. But just off like the trauma of that, having to deal with that, you know, anyone in the house at any age, I think that's 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 massive. Yeah, it's, it's it's massive, and to to overcome, I don't think you you could overcome that. I I went through a um like so my mum passed away Sorry, like a, a couple of years ago, but we went through something quite traumatic, you know, with her passing, yeah. and um I know how it is to try like even me like even starting to touch yeah. on it, it's it's emotional. I can it's emotional. It. It's it's hard, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so I absolutely rate. What what you're doing and yeah, yeah bro, more power to you and no, yeah, thank keep you, up, keep thank up. You. But um, yeah, I- explain where it, it it went from there. Yeah, you know? yeah. So from there, um, this is where I kind of messed up as a big brother and as a non and as um, I'm gonna cry. I think um, it's cool, bro. Take your time. Because what I done um was I went on the like a destructive path. So what okay. I done and to everybody else, it seemed like I was trying to cause other people harm. But in fact, what I was trying to do is put myself in situations or just be self-destructive. Okay. I, 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 like general things, fighting. Um, the, the things I don't even want to talk about, just bad things, man. Mm. And, um, Were you generally into, did you dabble in the kind of the badness or was it yeah. a complete character change? No, no, I've always dabbled. That's what <laughs> okay, I mean. So, right, it, cool. so it kind of like took me back to how I used to be. Got you, got you. And then, um, yeah, it was bad. So then my, my sister, she should have had the attention, but instead, she did have the attention, but instead, obviously, I'm, I'm misbehaving, I'm being bad now, I, like, I'm getting a lot of attention on me. Mm. And it kind of took it away from her at a crucial time where she needed it the most. Okay. And that's something that I regret massively to this day. Okay, um, okay. But it's just, bro, it's one of those things. It's how you dealt with it. Everyone's on their own journey after that, like, you know, and it's it, it, you don't know how you're gonna act until something yeah. like this happens, so you can't be sorry for it. Like you know, you can only move forward with things like this, I guess. Like you know, and try and build off it. You know, so um, with with all this kind of getting into trouble, where, like where did that take? Were, were you getting into trouble with the police at this point, or were you just doing a madness and kind of just keeping it moving, like you yeah. weren't getting caught for it? I'll tell you because everyone will laugh on the manner, like uh-huh. I, so. I don't to say, doc, I don't want to talk about anything like this, really, but. So there's a there's a well known guy local yeah he, he's a monster huge okay. and I decided to take a few passes off him not pay him on purpose like just just to cause myself ag that wow. I knew I couldn't deal with and then wow. I ended up dealing with and then whatever else so that was one of the things um, and then just generally causing trouble mates going out getting drunk uh, I was using a lot of cocaine and a lot of sniff yeah yeah a lot yeah. of it yeah. And I was just I was just being the being the knob mate yeah knob. that guy you didn't want to be around that guy in a party that had be okay until he had too many drinks and, and then he's just loose yeah yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. That, and taking out my just because I'm upset and what I've saw you know, I used to take it out on people and I used to get really pissed off you and like, someone says to me I'm depressed and I'm saying what, are you to, what have you got to be depressed about yeah. what have you got to be depressed about exactly you know what I'm when you see when, when something bad that bad happens in your life it puts everything into perspective definitely but now I'm positive see when people now get um, about their depression I help them now but then I was taking it as like an offence. How are you depressed? What, yeah, what yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been yeah. under sesh last night and you woke up depressed. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. On, like, like your troubles ain't real, bro. Yeah, yeah. When like they that. could be like someone's someone's problems to be small to us, but to them it's huge. Hundred percent. And I didn't I didn't appreciate that at all. Not not at all. Okay. So I was enough. Um, and I guess that's where we we, we went with this bare knuckle because there's there's two sides to it. So as I explained at the, at the beginning, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll slow down a little bit. Um, when Lola had first died. Um, do you get um, something called a cuddle cut? Okay. Yeah. Now, certain children's hospitals have these. Some of them don't, um, and they rent them out. Now, they're like a refriger. They've got like a refrigerated unit on them, and they're like a Moses basket. Some of them have a um, like a, a pulsating mechanism that um, makes sound like the heart's beating. Okay. And I don't know the psychological ins and outs of it, but I just know that there's studies that say it helps the mother deal with the loss of a child. Okay. So it's for them to, like, the mother to, s- 
sit by the side of the cot yeah, exactly. for X amount of time yeah. until. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So she couldn't she couldn't rent one. There was there wasn't one there to, to rent out to. I don't you don't pay for them, but they have them to give to you for yeah. a set period of time, obviously. Um, so she'd done a GoFundMe page or just giving. Yeah. And th- this is this is one thing that um, quite irritates me. So when Lola died, okay, when Sarah put status up, um, letting everybody know what happened. She had something stupid, like 200 likes or like love hearts, whatever they are. Loads of comments, shares, everything. Of course. A week later, she puts up about a cuddle cut. Probably gets two shares, a few comments. Yeah. A few people might donate a couple of quid here and there. Yeah. I just thought, nah, this, 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 this so, is... Social right, media is crazy, bro. Mm, you know? It's, it's like everyone wants to act like they care mm-hmm. when it's all they have to do is like, hit a like from the comfort of their mm-hmm. couch or whatever they're doing. Exactly. Write a little comment. And don't get me wrong, some people probably... Well, the pe- people care. Yeah. But, you know, when it's time to put that into action, that's yeah. when you see, you know, who's really, you know, about it, you know. That's a shame. And what you're saying, like, she, like so what was what was the ultimate goal in so that? She wanted how much did they raise? So she wanted to raise, uh, it's £1,500 per quarter cut. Okay, Got so it. she wanted to buy a quarter cut, yeah. Okay. For Birmingham Children's Hospital. I, I think she raised t- 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 200 and something pounds, some, something like that. And that was over a, a period of, like, um, like a month or something. No way. Yeah, yeah. So as I said, there was a few years in, uh, disrupted by me being um, an idiot and just general l- grieving and all that kind of stuff, repairing ourselves as a family and my sister repairing herself as a mother and um, as is a very, 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 very strong woman, man. very strong, Yeah, repaired herself. And then I kind of had like, um, I, I don't know, man, like a moment, yeah. And I just thought, I've got to, raise, I've got to do this for now. Like I've, I've sorted myself out and my head's a little bit clearer. Yeah. I need to raise the money for her. Yeah. How do I do that? Yeah. So they can imagine now, I'm sat in a council estate, loads of my mates are bare knuckle boxes, everyone's boxes, this and that. Yeah, so yeah. my whole world kind of is around violence and yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought, oh, I'll just give, I'll give, um, there's a bloke called Dougie Joyce. Okay. Um, and he was like massive, he's now still, he's massive on Instagram. Okay. Um, I think I have heard of him. He's yeah. a bare knuckle boxer, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And w- would I be wrong in saying Joyce is an Irish background, a tra- like a traveling, traveling, traveling family? family? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's quite a big Very family, fighting isn't proud yeah, family. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, yeah. All, they're all very, like, very fighting proud men. Um, so I thought, I'll offer him out. So, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly that. Mate, that's that's one extreme to another. Yeah, that's, yeah. That is crazy. So it's just simple as, like, I need a fight. I want to get attention to the cause. Yeah, yeah. He's the biggest in the game. Yeah, yeah. Not even taking into account how much of a good fighter oh, no, he is. I forget that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't yeah, care. Win or lose. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Wanna, wow. That's me. Fight or win or lose. I'm all that kid in school. I just fight anyone. I don't. I win or lose. I don't care about losing. That's no. Well, I care about it, but it doesn't affect my pride. My pride is standing up and fighting. As yeah. long as I stand up and fight, getting sat on my ass or bad. It's just yeah, part yeah, and part yeah. of anything. Yeah. Um, so luckily, well, luckily for the journey, I didn't realise that when I phoned Dougie Joyce, that Ben Hatchett was sat next to him. Okay. And Dean Itchward was in the back, so I had witnesses to it, yeah. So he was kind of like, he's going to be laughing watching this. He was kind of screwed, yeah, he yeah. couldn't get away from it. Okay, okay, um, okay. As the conversation uh, progressed, he said, look, I can't do it because I must, well, you know, just because of who he is. He said, I'd want 50 grand. 50 grand? I said, mate. I said, For oh. you to fight him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For your cause? Yeah, yeah, the size of him, the size of me, mate. Your man's like 16 stone, and I'm coming in at like oh, 11, 9. Big? Yeah, he's, he's, big, he's, a, he's a lump, like, he's a lump. He's okay, a lump. Yeah, he's okay, a lump. okay. I he's thought tall. you was calling out someone who knew how to fight, but was kind of your size. I know he's a lump. Yeah, no, he's a lump. Oh, you're yeah, nuts. Yeah, he's a lump. You're he's a lump. crazy. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's what I wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought my craziness can raise money for cuddle cuts and fantastic. And it's not just about, right now, he's about being crazy, but that's how you get the attention. <laughs> of course, yeah, you've got to. That's the thing with social media nowadays, going back to it, like, you know, as much as a good cause you're fighting for, excuse the pun, mm-hmm. like, you know, as you were saying, taking 100 laps of doing the 100 yeah, uh, yeah. lengths of a swimming pool, it's just not going to cut it. No. Getting right. the, the media attention or the attention you want. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, as going back to right at the beginning, I think you've done the most standout thing you can do. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, because there's an element of it is, there's a big element of it that, bro, you're going into a losing battle. Exactly. Possibly. Yeah, yeah. So this is like, you're you're willing to, to really sacrifice yourself mm-hmm. for this cause. Yeah. And I think... That speaks volumes for for the cause too, yeah. you know. So can I, can I can I go back a little bit before we got into the 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 fighting or the decision to get fighting? Did like obviously you've went through like a, a big traumatic event and you never get over these kind of things. Mm. It's just they you find ways to deal with manage with manage them slightly better. Well, that's what I found with certain things yeah. that happened in my life, you know. But did you seek any like? Um, therapy or any kind of mental health help or because it's, it's our mental health at the end of the day yeah, yeah. Did, did you feel you needed it 
or did you tell me about it? I tried. Okay. I tried. But let's be honest, I'm in Birmingham. I'm not a millionaire and yeah. it's Birmingham and healthcare and they try their hardest for everyone. But when you have so my sister needed crisis she needed a crisis team once. And I think they took like the next day they responded or something, mate. Could you I don't know what a crisis team is. Um, Excuse me for So like say if you're feeling very suicidal or okay. your mental health's got to a point now where you, you can't do anything apart from you need the team to come out and deal with you. Kind of like an intensive tear, uh, sorry, intensive care mental health team. That is what it's kind of got like. You. Got you. Um, but they wouldn't come out to the next day. It's very stretched in Birmingham. So the help I was getting was either rushed or mm. I weren't really feeling like they were listening to me properly. Kind of just being put through that kind of, it's a tick box exercise exactly kind of thing. That. Those generic questions, not really. Yeah, not looking. I mean, not even, for, you can tell when someone's, you can tell when someone's engaging with you and listening. When someone's just on a notepad like this and they're just going, okay. And it, okay, and that's not, say, anyone who works in mental health or right, yeah, and you, you're helping people out massively. Yeah, it's definitely. just in my incident. Yeah. It, it, I wasn't that far where I was going to, once I was, when I thought about it, but I've never gone that far over like I've self harmed or done anything that bad for them to actually come out. Got you, so got you, got you. So you ended up kind of getting yourself back to a place where you was kind of fairly stable, yeah. And then made that decision, yeah. And you, was this also, although you were trying to, you know, fight for this cause, mm. was it almost something to take your mind off it? It's a new, a new kind of lane, a new. You yeah. know, a new start, a fresh you. Exactly that, but without knowing. That's the point. Okay. I didn't know that I needed this. Okay. So that's what's weird about the journey as well. So like even meeting Dan, my man, and, and everybody else, everything's kind of linked up. Mm -hmm. And I know it sounds mad, yeah, but I, I, I fully, fully, fully believe that Lola is there 100% of the way. And that's not, yeah. I'm not a mental case. I don't think there's a little girl running no, around, no, but no. she's, she's with yeah, me, yeah, yeah. I trust no, me. No, 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 she's there, bro. 100%, mate. 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I, I feel the same with yeah. my mum and things Fair, like that. Yeah, yeah definitely, mate. They're there guiding us through, bro. Exactly, like, you know bro. what I mean? In those times. <laughs> but, um, and, um, yeah. Yeah, it's got me chills, as. Yeah. Yeah, she guides you, man. Um, so then, sorry, so where, where was you then? Do you know what's crazy, actually? I just want to say something that, you know, we just had that little conversation about people mm -hmm. being there, and it's, oh, bro, it's going to get me. Do you know when I was waiting, you was a little bit late, innit? Mm -hmm. You was a little bit late, and I was just, I was on my phone. Mm -hmm. And you know on, like, uh, iPhones now, if you, I don't know if you've got an iPhone, but if you swiped, maybe on other phones too, but, like, if you swipe right so it takes you away from the apps, sometimes it gives you, like, a memory or a photo. Oh, okay. Literally, when yeah. I was waiting, had like one of my favorite photos oh, of my mum. Just, and I was like, because I've I've never met you before, yep. and although I do this and I'm on camera a lot, and people think that you know it just it flows naturally and all that. Yeah. It's still for me, bro. It's still it's still a thing. Yeah, like you know, it's still a thing. Is, yeah, yeah. It's it, I put myself in situations that you know are sometimes bigger than me, and I just try to just man up to him and whatever yeah, like you know yeah. i'm not saying i was nah, like i love that though really i love scared, that but yeah, I, like like today so it was a little bit pressure for me like you know I, I want it to go right for you as much as i want it to go right for myself like you know okay. and um i saw that picture mm -hmm. i was like nah it's cool yeah, do you know what man. i mean yeah, that yeah, like I, that's no gas is mm -hmm. no bullshit that's 100 percent. like you yeah. know what yeah. i mean so just going back it's just weird no, that's wicked man that's yeah. what it does you know, doesn't yeah. it, it brings back them it's that it's that and and even like you know if people think you know, oh, like, bro, like, he's chatting rubbish. Like, mm. even, they can think they're not really there or whatever. But, for instance, just seeing that picture, mm -hmm. she's there with me. She's just, like, just the picture has gave me strength. Exactly. She's with you. Do you see what I'm saying? So, so, you can't tell me she's not there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because no, no one can't tell you. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm. So, yeah, I feel you. I yeah, feel you. No, thank you. Sorry, I've went off on a tangent. No, you but, have um, Yeah. So, I think we got to the point where Doggy wanted 50 grand, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, so he wanted 50 grand. I said, look, mate, if I had 50 grand... I'd go and buy however many of these colour cuts. I'm obviously coming to you because I want to raise money and awareness. I'm not, I ain't got a 50 grand. Yeah. He said, all right, sound. And I'll never forget this. He went to put the phone down and I was thinking in my head really quickly, oh, what can I do? And I went, no, 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 yeah, stop. I'll fight any one of you fighters. He said, what? I said, well, you've got a show coming up, haven't you, Manchester? He said, yeah. I said, I will fight any single one of your fighters. I said, tell me the way I'll go up. Tell me the way I'll go down. Yeah. I said, any man. He's gone. You're a madman, he said. But I'll ring you in two weeks. Wow. I said right, sound. Do you do you think? Um, sorry to stop you. Do you do you think when he got that call, mm -hmm. like he's like, I get these kind of calls every week. This is just another dude. Or is it like quite out of the blue, someone offering him out? Is he, that like a big thing? He gets other traveller men offering him out. I don't think he's ever had a man who's not a traveller man and isn't even a ring man, a butt like fighting man, yeah, yeah. offering him out just out of the blue. I doubt he's ever had any money in them calls. That's mad. Like, so t with with the boxing, again, because I'm intrigued, bare knuckle yeah. boxing, because, bro, like, again, I'm not a fighter, but back in the day, I had a few scuffs. Yeah, like, you man. know what I mean? I've done, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I've, I've kind of done it. And I even... Um, 
I remember one time actually is oh, fucking up. <laughs> me and my pal, I don't even ask what we were on, right? But me and my pal, shout out to Michael, Michael Price, right? <laughs> we um we were mash up and we thought it would be a good idea to go to the closest car park. We're pals and we like we liked fighting. Right, but we didn't really know how to fight, so we thought, "Oh, bro, it's so crazy." We thought we'd, um, we thought we'd go there, and we had no boxing gloves because we was, we was gonna have a little sparring or whatever. <laughs> so he was like, "What do we, what do we do, yeah, to kind of take the the impact away, yeah. bro?" D- I don't know why this was the only thing because thinking back now, there must have been so much other things available. We wrapped toilet paper around our hands, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah, <it> <laughs> toilet, <good ideas. laughs> toilet paper. I'm thinking, <laughs> thinking that, and going back, I was about sixteen, yeah. yeah. So, um. What does it look at ages as well? Bro, I, I, thinking back to it, there was barely any... I don't know what happened. Mm. Michael, tell me what happened. I don't know what happened. <laughs> but anyway, so we went to the car park and we, we're swinging it out with each other. Like, just literally... Just I literally split my... I've still got a scar on my eye. Um, we sw- and, and I thought... I was meant to be like one of the, boy, one of the fighters. Oh, one of the like, you know what I mean? That, so yeah, that's yeah. what I was kind of... Call- Bro, I was slipping all over the place, <laughs> getting pumped in my face. I was yeah. like, what the hell? But um, that is as close to ever having like a... a kind of an arranged... Yeah. fight when you're not wearing boxing gloves or anything yeah, yeah. and bro it's pressure it's, it's absolute pressure. pressure and going back to it um, with um, the fella Dougie Joyce is yes. his name yeah so is he still like because I know the travellers he's kind of ingrained in, in what they do in their culture they settle things through fighting right like yep. does he will he still have a scuff outside or is he allowed is that like he'll do what he wants to do mate yeah okay. yeah yeah look I can't yeah there was an incident you've, a couple of weeks ago and I got sent a video so just just I know you're on your job Dougie's on his job man Dougie's on his <laughs> okay, job okay he's okay good, okay he's good. shout out to him yeah yeah he's all right he's good stuff and he's good stuff because there was um uh, this not this isn't the time place for this podcast but there was um a lot of there was a bit of drama or, or rumors after the, the last show for on for him the 3d fight club and he got a tiny little bit of bad press at the beginning okay but this man here if it weren't for dougie i wouldn't be sat here in front of you now got you. and lola's name wouldn't be anywhere because I, no other show would have let me go on there with no experience okay he fully helped me out got me another guy who hadn't had a bare knuckle fight before Okay. And he fully set my platform up, mate. He didn't. Wow. Like, he fully did. He, he yeah. gave me people, give me contacts to speak to. If it weren't for him, I would never met Dan, my manager. I'd never met Ben Hatchett. Would never met anybody. That's mad. That he's the he's the, he's the guy. He, That's the crazy. Guy, wow! Shout out to him. Mm-hmm. So he just goes to show, man. It all depends. And did he have? Did did he know about your cause? Did Did you tell him a little bit? Was that part of it, or was he kind of just? No, nobody. Uh, like I said, until I just told you everybody exactly what had happened, knew what had happened. Oh, okay. like, so he okay. knew that I'd lost my niece, yes. but I just cut his cut death because, like I said to you before, my sister is. I've got I've got a daughter, and they're all everyone's the same important, but she's so important to me. My sister is like I'm yeah. so I'm so, like I'm proper protective big brother. Yeah. yeah. So with the story being so uh, sensitive, I had to check with her. Is it time? Yeah. And then it's been a bit of a roller coaster at the moment. Okay. Like we've got things to book to Sweden and all this kind of stuff. And uh, Sarah went, it's the time, so you, you need to do it. Then I met Ant, and then Ant mentioned you, and I thought, nah, this is, this is, <laughs> this is a bit... Yeah, it's crazy. Right, so yeah. I'm just going to go with the flow. Yeah, yeah. So Dougie, didn't, Dougie doesn't know exactly what happened until he, until he watches this, yeah. Got mm-hmm. it. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, shout out to him even more for, for taking that kind of, mm-hmm. that leap of faith, because sometimes it would be, it would have played on his heartstrings a little exactly. bit more, but yeah. he's kind of done it out of the mm-hmm. kindness of his... Heart, not even know. Yeah. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So, um, yeah, moving forward. So, so you've you've he's he set you up, right? Yeah. Did you say he set you up with someone who has never boxed before too? Well, no, nah, the, the lad I fought, yeah, he's he's known as the Swan. He's an he's an animal. Did you say the Swan? Did yeah, you? he's from Wales. His name's the Swan. Oh, okay, okay. He can fight like hell. That like he's a nutcase. Yeah. Okay. It just he's never fought bare knuckle. That's the thing. Okay. He's done. He's, oh, sorry. <laughs> give the Swan a little slap. <laughs> he's done loads of loads of martial arts and whatever. He's, okay. he's a bummer. But the things it was. I actually took, there was four fighters. So the first one I originally took came in at 13 and a half stone. And I think I was 11, eight. So I jumped on a course or whatever and tried to make the weight. And then they rang me and said, ah, oh, now we've got somebody else. You've got to come down a few pounds. So I took another fighter. Okay. Came down a few pounds. Then they said, ah. Oh, and what, what kind of period of time is this in between? Because obviously going up and down weights, I don't know how drastic the weight changes. Yeah, yeah. But it can't be that easy, right? No, no, it wasn't easy at all. And I've never done yeah. it before. What's what's your natural weight, actually? What's right, your like kind weight, of... Pff, I'm comfortable around 12, 4, like 12 and a half. 12, okay. 4, 12 and a half. And, and you'll have to forgive me too. What are the weight classes? As like, Are they the same as boxing? Kind? I don't really the know. The lights keep it around 5 key, don't they? Around 5 the same. So you have an 80, 80 kg fight against an 85. Sorry, as in like heavyweight? Super heavyweight, bantamweight, featherweight. Like, yeah, is yeah. It, 
it, are those? There are in some of the organisations. I think 3D are announcing it soon, but they haven't announced it at the moment. Got yeah. So they, they do fights. It's, it's all fair. You know, I've got someone who's mad heavy against someone who's uh, lighter, but they haven't actually got the heavyweight lightweight. Oh, there's balance. no title kind of given. It's just if you're 85 kg, you can fight another mate who's 80 to 85 kg. Exactly. But that's it. Was on the other show. As I say, there's that much promo work going on for the next 3D Fight Club. I can't tell you what they've what they've got planned. They could have. Oh, I can't tell you. But that's how it was. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 And um. So you've taken this fight? Well, yeah. So the, the, what happened was I ended up taking four fighters and say the other three cancelled for whatever reason, maybe injuries or whatever. But I didn't say no to any man. And I didn't ever ask him. I didn't. When he said to me, do you want to fight so-and-so? I just said, yes. He said, <laughs> he's dropped out. Can you fight so-and-so? I said, yes. And then wow. again, yes. And then he comes to this one. And then I had a warning. So like, <laughs> yeah, exactly that. The lads are going, are you sure you want to take this one? Like, are you sure? I said, mate, you could put anybody in front of me. Yeah. Yeah. The harder they are, the better. Because... It's a bit selfish. I, I was treat. I did treat the fight, and I was always going to treat the fight as self harm because I don't self harm, and going in the ring and taking the punishment I did, and still walking onto punches and whatever else. Um, it, it, I released a lot. I, I, yeah, I felt. I felt. I felt lighter, way yeah, lighter. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it, was yeah, a bit, it was a bit of both. So the harder the geezer are putting at me, the better. Just, just yeah, bring yeah, it yeah. on, yeah. Just bring it on. So is this your first... You, you fight one fight? Or yeah, yeah, you, one. Okay, cool. So with this fight then, take me back to the day when you're about to fight this guy in front of how many people also? There was a lot of people. It was, <laughs> it was in the um, Manchester Bowlers Arena. This is another thing I wasn't expecting. See, because it was Dougie Joyce. Imagine like big fat gypsy weddings when they do the weddings to the extreme. Yeah. Like, can you imagine what Dougie done to this place? It had like all um, plants hanging from the ceiling. He had all fireworks coming out as you come out of the water. Yeah, it was a really, It was really, a proper yeah, setup. Yeah, 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 proper setup. And wow. to my heart was going, ah, I yeah. weren't expecting this. Like, Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but the day was um, the day was quite emotional because, yeah. I mean, there's two of my, my, my very good pals here, um that have been with me from day one. So big up Dan Haste, John McNutt. I love them, man. They're, they're my boys, yeah. Um, I, I'd i always said to them, look, I'm not going into this fight to win. I'm not even fighting. I said, I'm going into the fight, no guard, and whoever that man is in front of me, I'm, I'm walking him down. Yeah. So when you say no guards... I, I went into the fight, off, going like, telling him to... I was, I was at one point in the fight, I've got my arms out like this, going, hit me, you positive. Yeah, hit me, yeah, screaming at him. Mm, mm. Wow. Mm. And what the crowd saying? Like, hang on, like, there's obviously people in the crowd and your friends, mm. I'd assume, there. Are they like... Is this uh, has this been a tactic that you've spoke to them about, or have, yeah. is this just a last minute kind of? No, two of my mates knew, and then my other mate Trez, who does, he's a bare knuckle boxer. He went insane at me, like he's, my, he's one of my good pals. And yeah, he's like, yeah. Jack, you can't, you can't be doing this. And it actually came to the point where there was like, I, like I got okay, I got told off. Yeah, if I okay, hear you, okay. got a bit of a telling off by him. Wow. Um, but I had my own reasons, yeah, and I, I knew this is the thing as well. Yeah, this is the thing. I knew two things. There was going to be two times I got doubted a lot. The first time, when I suddenly turn around to everyone and go, oh, guess what I'm doing? I'm fighting bare knuckle for the first time ever. Mm. The doubters, and it happened. Like, even some of my very close mates were like, oh, man, you ain't going to do that. You're mad, though. Oh. Right? And, yeah, because it's, it's so different so from what different. you're used to mm. and what you've done. And he's saying, because there's so much of a period before the fight, he said, there's so much that can happen. Like, I didn't, like, like Everyone's doubting me a lot. Like, I had a lot of doubters. And then, so when I knew I was going into a fight to lose, I then also had to take into consideration that not only are these doubters going to doubt me getting in the ring, then when I get in the ring and I get battered the way I get battered, then when I get home, everyone's going to be like, oh, you're shit, you're this, you got... So yeah. I had to prepare for yeah. two lots. And to be fair, see the second one, I didn't get... Everyone was just like, you geezer, mate, like you've, you've, you've gone in there and you've, you've done the job and okay. you've done it for your knees. But the first time, the, the, the amount of doubt... So you've had two fights then? No, I mean the two lots of doubt. I mean, I, oh, yeah. sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, cool. Sorry, my yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. got you. So it, it's, it's been hard one, but it was worth it. it was That's worth mad. It. So what training does it entail? Like leading leading up to that, also, is it like because I know you went in there kind of mm -hmm. fresh to it. Yeah. Did you train prior? Little bit. I'm not gonna lie, once or twice. And no way. Yeah, it's a bit. It was, last time was a big like a just. It was just. I had to get attention. I had to. Yeah. So. Yeah, I didn't train, went in that's there mad. and uh, got the job done. But this time's different, right? And that, that's what I need to tell everyone. Everyone needs to know that, yeah. Okay. I was fighting for Lola that time, yeah. Yes. This time I'm fighting to win for Lola, and it? And it's okay. a big difference, yeah. Yeah. And you see, when I'm telling you I'm fighting to win for my niece, mm. that's a big difference, that is. Because yeah. that's a statement. Last time I said I'm fighting for her, and it's a, no, it's a bit of like a jackass stunt, yeah. I'm getting in there with a bare knuckle boxer. Yeah. This time I've been training in a strict camp, 
and he's getting his head absolutely blown off on this next fight. Well, <laughs> oh, that's yeah, 100%. Yeah, 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 I'm not. Well, yeah, bro, if you're saying it, that's, yeah, that is a big statement. So, with the other fella, sorry to keep going back, I'm just trying mm. to get, obviously, you went, I think people would want to know, you went bare knuckle against the swan, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a notorious dude. And you didn't even put up a guard. No, no. What happened to you? I had my, um, my lip was obviously split, nose broke, and my ear was split in half. I'd said that glued back together, like I said. Oh my gosh. The, um, I took the punch of the night. So everyone said he hit me with the punch of the night. I, I walked onto a left straight and it hit me in my chin. But then as it turned my neck, I had like a, a fracture in my larynx. Oh my god! So gosh. it slept me straight away. Then I still got back up. And like all the lads, I heard all the travel lads going, yeah, well, that was a horse, you wouldn't get back up. How's he got, you know, like, <laughs> that like, was a horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. So I got back up and, yeah, man, it was, just, and after that then, I just had, like, and that's what I mean, I'd done that sacrifice and I lost a lot of people on that journey. Like, really? Yeah, because it could, because like, of that. But I'm leading up to, yeah, because it's a lot of dedication, it's a lot of promise, and it's a lot of promise people didn't know would be fulfilled. And if the promises aren't fulfilled, then you're a scumbag, aren't you? If you go, the whole camp saying, yeah, you're going to do this for a charity and then you pull out with a leg injury the day before. Yeah, yeah, for real. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's a, it's a lot on your back, man. Mm. It's a lot, it's a lot on your back. And it was a mad thing to do, man. So you got to think, it, my mates were just kind of thinking, oh, you just lost a plug and you know, like you, you're thinking about Lola too much. You, not too much, that's wrong, but it's playing on your mind again and yeah. this and that. And I just went, no, I'm doing this, man. I'm doing it. That's great, bro. Mm. Props to you. I've got to say that I don't, I, yeah, I think about boxing sometimes and I'm yeah. like, bro, but I get in there with a bomber, bro. It's game yeah. over for me. Yeah, yeah. And you know what, right? So going back to boxing and it, in fact, so I'm I'm very intrigued about the world of bare knuckle boxing mm -hmm. because it's, it's kind of up until recent years, maybe even only last year, mm -hmm. I've never actually, I don't think I, I've heard about it being an actual sport. Okay. I've just knew that bare knuckle boxers predominantly from the traveling background, mm -hmm. but I didn't know it was a above ground kind of yeah. sport. Is it? Is it a recent? Like, is this? Is it like a, a new evolution of like fight martial arts or something yeah, that's come out? It's just like gone to the mainstream. It's or? just gone massive. So I can't me I can't mention certain promotions, obviously. But there's a promotion in America that compete with UFC, but they do bare knuckle yet. So they've had the likes of Chad Mendes, Mike Platinum Perry, uh, MVP. They've had loads of high quality, high level fighters into bare knuckle boxing that um one of the lads i know from my local area he fights for them and he's been over to america fighting over there for them wow. as well um so there's that they there's um what's your organization where was we going to no because i was just asking like has is oh, it sorry, like a new phenomenon before? kind of if that is the right word uh, sorry, like how it yeah, yeah, yeah how my it head exploded. skips i forgot where no, I was cool, well, always there. um so it's been going on for years like i'd say i've been watching them for a good five years i've been watching going to watch them okay. but but it was done it started off all in social clubs and you had like some place to pit fights where they put bales of hay around yeah yeah i think i've seen that kind yeah, of stuff yeah. yeah and then the one organization took it to another level and they had the uh, um the o2 the o2 arena wow and i think that's been they've had it running there now for it's got to be four years it's got to be four years but in the past 12 months Everything's just gone mad pub publicity wise. Like yeah. Everywhere you look, it's bare knuckle boxing. That's that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Everywhere. I, I wasn't sure again because you mentioned Ben Hatchett. Mm -hmm. Now Ben Hatchett is another fellow who I've actually had on the podcast. He's. Do you know that? Yeah, yeah. So you, I've seen the yeah, little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, and Ben was Ben was a, a proper intriguing guy, but a bit like yourself. Lovely, like a lovely guy that's went through a like um, a struggle that's mm -hmm. kind of blossomed him into this new person. Like, because yeah. I think when I spoke to him, he'd been out of prison for. A month, two months. So yeah. it was really everything was new, and I've kind of after that. I, I want to say it might have even been nearly a year ago now. I've kind of watched his journey, and he okay. started bare knuckle boxing. Oh, he's good. Yeah, yeah. He's it, and and he's got like the fastest knockout or something. Yeah, fastest knockout for that the promotion. Yeah, really, really, really quick knockout. Man. Okay, okay. And like again, like shout out to to Ben. I don't oh. know, like are the people he's fighting kind of up there, or ha is it a bit the same with like? Like let's say mainstream boxing, you've got to work your way up to the title, or you can just get big fights straight away. Like how's it? I think you work you work your way up, and as in the bare knuckle world, I think you can kind of land yourself a decent fight without knowing. Do you know what I mean, you could be okay. fighting someone who you don't know is decent. He's absolutely incredible, mm -hmm. um, and you get you get a lot of opportunities. But the, the lads who Ben have fought have been hard. That the Marley, I can't remember his surname now. He does K one, and all his other opponents been boxers and stuff. It's just Ben's just gone in there, dealt with them quickly and efficiently, and then. It will get harder for him, like he's joined another promotion now, and their yeah. fighters are 
athletes like there there's a different grade okay but Ben will still polish up mate he'll go in there yeah. deal with it in a couple of seconds and get out as well yeah 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 yeah, yeah. No, wicked 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 so um all right cool so you've you, you've had this fight you've taken mad injuries mm -hmm. what what went through your mind after that was it was it kind of like all right cool my job's done now or was it you're now trying to make amends for what happened or like what was I thought that was over so I've genuinely thought oh that's it done now yeah sound okay. and then like, like I said I met I met Dan my manager one of my very close friends now he's helping massive out right away yeah cool. um I met him at the show like, he, he's helping me out massive through the thing um like, where was we again we had to done the same thing yeah no Keep like just it. just moving forward like I was I was like um I wondered if you had just done this one fight yeah, yeah. or you just it was meant to end there yeah yeah and you said you... Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, no, cause that's where I was getting to. Sorry, man. So I met people like Dan, um, Ben Hatchett, um, Ashley McGriffin, loads of everyone, everyone else. And then they all kind of like carried on the journey for me. There was... There's that many opportunities coming my way. I couldn't say... I just I couldn't say no. And then... The, the one day, case, okay, so the one day, I'll, I'm on my phone and I get a WhatsApp pop-up and it's off Dan. And it's Kreps from Kreps and Conan. Kreps and Conan. He's no doing, way. giving me and Lola a shout out. Yeah. And I'm no going. Way. Oh, you know when you're looking at your phone? I'm yeah. sitting in the council house here and I'm going, hey, what, this can't Just be right. Just random. Yeah. This, like, I, I, I think there might have been a little conversation about a week. I might I could try to get Kreps to do something, but I was not expecting that to come through. Amazing. And, um, and then, so that was on the socials. And then everyone's helped me kind of move it forward. No one's letting me stop the journey. That's the thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then I had fights offered left, right and centre. Like, my, my mates were going to me, like, you're lost and you still get more opportunities than we did because it's what you fought for and yeah. it's, it's how you've done it. So then two other promotions came to me, um, wanted me to fight. I was doing one fight for them on July the 30th uh, in Sheffield. Great. That's for I mentioned that's for BFBA, and then I'm fighting August the nineteenth, three uh, D Fight Club, and that's against now this guy he's actually my manager's friend and <laughs> Ben Atchett's friend. It's Tom's and his brother Josh Courtney. So that's going to be a huge fight. That is. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah okay. It's be a massive fight. So, so what? What? Like you're going to have to be on job, right? I'm on like job. Like training. Like so, you, you're saying you're right now. You're in yeah, training I'm camp hard, job, right? Yeah, I'm on job. What does that consist of? Like, like how how does your life look right now, day to day, like? getting prepped for this like yeah, waking up every morning half five six o'clock jogs i jog for do a mile and a half it's not nothing too long i just do a mile and a half yeah. then i go to the gym do about an hour two hours in the gym go do my job come back an hour hour and a half in the gym wow jog stretch down i like doing yoga as well now i don't yeah, know why yeah. i've gone weird with yoga no flexibility yeah yeah so no that's, that's, yoga is the, the, the thing yeah i gotta practice out on friday night man but yeah yeah with the core it's good man yeah it's yeah, good, yeah, man. yeah it's good so i am training hard that's dedication and that's seven days a week yeah yeah, yeah. bro I'm, i find it hard to get in the gym like three days a week like yeah. you know what i mean so talking about training twice a day with these early morning starts when you do you know what gets me early, in my head mm. no go on go on, go on. I said early morning is really easy for me yeah, because th that incident happened at six 15 a.m. So I wake up earlier. Like, yeah. I don't know how it works when I'm asleep. I don't do it, but I always wake up early. Like that, that's what I'm like. So it, yeah. it, it, it kind of, it kind of helps. Like get get me out of bed. Yeah. You know? See, I'm kind of the opposite way around. I mean, before the world of YouTube come about, mm -hmm. I was a HGV mechanic. Okay. Believe it or not, my dad like, was. Yeah, yeah. No way. Yeah, it's mad. That is. Yeah, yeah. This really? is what I'm saying, bro. This is this mad little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a HGV mechanic. That's crazy. That is okay. Cool, cool. So. I used to have to get up regimented and go to work. Like anyone, like with nine to five, you, you have to get up at this time. And then when I branched away and started doing my own thing with YouTube, it's now, all right, cool. I can wake up whatever time I want. Although that's not the right way to look at it. Because if exactly. you're going to be, you know, effective with what you're doing and you mm. actually, you have drive, you get up early, yeah, you yeah. know. But now I don't have to get up at, uh, for instance, seven forty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be one of those ones where I'm like, all right, seven thirty, but. I don't really have to get up, so <laughs> yeah. I might just do another half an hour or whatever. But I say that because it's now, like, for instance, some of my pals train early okay. in the morning, and I'm like, bro, I don't have to be up. That, like, for me, yeah. I ain't getting up. If I don't yeah. have to be up, I don't... Like, so, so if I had to get up and jog, mm -hmm. like... It's not my worst nightmare, mm -hmm. but that's that's long, bro. That's peak yeah, for yeah, me yeah. right I now. Like, I, I hate it, bro. It's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> but again, that kind of drive just to get up, get out, mm -hmm. do it, mm -hmm. and have it done. I guess at the end of the day, when everything is done, mm -hmm. you're there like, all right, cool. Yeah, Another yeah, day yeah, in, yeah. we're solid. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And there's that, that sense of achievement. And we actually spoke to, um, we spoke off camera briefly on the phone. And um, for me, going back to training and everything, 
I'm not like nowhere near what you're doing. Yeah. But even getting in there those little three times a week or whatever, yeah. for my like my mental health, for mm. my my well being, to make me feel good, mm. I need to do that. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it is just that little bit of at the end of the week, all right, cool, we crossed off the three. Yeah. Maybe even, sometimes, very rarely, we might even get a four in there. Why, You know why, what I mean? And then I walk him around with the tightest <laughs> top yeah, on, got bro. Two you know what I mean? Your... Got the missus to shrink the top, bro. <laughs> Tumble dry the extra hot. And I'm walking around feeling nice. But it's just those little things. So I can't imagine how a boxer in their prime or an athlete in their prime, when they're training all the time, and it, it, they haven't done it for one week. This has been a month or whatever. Yeah, yeah. How... How good they must feel. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I'm feeling good, man. You're feeling good? We had, we had a few pups last night in London. Yeah, 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 yeah. Down beyond there, I felt good yesterday. Walking <laughs> around like I was the man. Like I was the man. But the thing is, it's crazy, though, because, for instance, right, I like to think that I look all right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I've, I've, I've trimmed up. And we've got different physiques. You're more athletic. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? My kind of stuff's more for show. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, like, if I met someone like you who, who you just would not know exactly. has been training. Day in, exactly. day out, yeah. twice a day. And you speak to them wrong. Yeah. Bro, it could be curtains. I've had it with people in front of the missus and they give it death and you just think, oh, it's going to look horrible for you in a minute. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Your missus is adding me on Insta now. You're on the floor crying. It's all done. Yeah, I've had it. Love That's it. the thing. I've known a few people like that too. Like, you know, they just, bro, like, you should picked on the wrong person. Yeah, yeah. On yeah. the wrong day. It, man. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And what's crazy, actually, and I guess it actually ties into bare knuckle boxing and boxing, any martial arts, mm. but more so bare knuckle boxing because I think the risks are probably a little bit higher. But, like, you see, like, you might be walking down the road, your fucking, your physique is 10 10, and you get some dickhead, mm. might have just stumbled out of a pub mm. in front of his pals, think he can pick on you, bro. You give him a one bang, and anything can happen from that one bang. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Because obviously it's like, it's, it's bone to bone or whatever yeah. like that. So shit can happen. Do you, do you find that, or is it known in the, like, the bare knuckle world, the injury is more so than, or like, serious injury is more. Or it happens more than like boxing, or does it happen a lot? I know you probably don't know the stats, but does it? Because you got you got mashed yeah, up, bro. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. yeah. I got, I got injuries, mashed, bro. bro. Yeah, I got you mashed. Know what up. I mean, cuts, cuts, always. There's always bad, bad cuts because the way you learn to punch as well with the bare knuckle boxing is twisting your fist in, so it pulls the skin as well as you put. So it cuts. Yeah, Fuck so you twist it. So you get, there's always cuts, broken noses, stuff like that. But I was speaking to someone about this about a month ago, and apparently, over a period of years. If you box with boxing gloves, it's worse. Because I know, I know, I know. That's but hard. apparently, because it gives, it's the concussions more. Because see with a glove, if you put a, if you put a forty ounce glove or whatever on now and yeah. you bouted me, I might I, I'll drop or I might not drop and I'd be a bit dizzy. So being concussed, you bout me with no glove on, I'm dropping. It just kind of puts you out. Got you. Sometimes the concussion of going back and forward, back and forward, back and forward, is worse. So. <laughs> Do you reckon, in fact, I don't even know, how much like rounds are there in bare knuckle uh, fights and mm. how long are they for? And I guess it's going to change through different... They're shorter, so they intensify the rounds, so it's normally two-minute rounds, a minute and a half. Um, okay. For 3D, I think it was four going up to five on the main card, and I'm not too sure about the others. Wow. But it's normally first round, especially with 3D. Yeah, yeah, every yeah, every fight was like, Gone, like knock out every every first round, yeah. Bro, I'm so intrigued. I'm literally gonna go come, home. Man. Bro, I want to. Round, I was. I swear, I was meant to go to Ben Hatch. Bro, what happened? I swear, I was meant to go to Ben oh, Hatch's one of his fights, yeah, 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 yeah. and uh, it never happened. But um, I want to. I'm intrigued. Come I'm on. intrigued. But what I don't want to do is go in there. Everyone's hyped up. I'm you, standing in the crowd, and someone just looks at me wrong, and like I'm next thing I'm in a, a bare oh, knuckle fight myself, bro. You should with me and Ben Hatch. Everyone, you laughing anyway, bro. You get involved, then you'll be having it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So tell us about the um the upcoming fight or anything in between that last fight and kind of obviously feeling the pain and the journey from that mm. to where we're going now with it. You're winning. Like, I'm winning now. Yeah. Like the journey's gone different now. Um, I, I, I kind of feel proud of myself for it. And like everyone is now bigging me up. So I've gone from having doubters now to everyone's behind me pushing this journey. So now I haven't got anybody like, pushing me away, uh, pulling me. Everyone's just pushing me straight in the right direction. And it's lovely. So... Um, I don't really know where it's going to take us next. We've got loads of things planned. Um, Dan, my manager, has managed to arrange us to go over to Sweden okay. for a very, very, very important meeting. Okay. Um, hopefully, um, me and Ben will be over there fighting soon. Okay. Um, fighting. I can't it, talk about Sweden. Yeah. But I like, there, so there's bare knuckle boxing. I know you mentioned America. Yeah. But there's a it's it's kind of international, as in Sweden, here, there, everywhere. Yeah, yeah it's a little bit different. We're doing in Sweden, but it's okay. no, it's no, definitely no gloves. Definitely no gloves. That's crazy. 
Yeah. 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 Keep it low. Keep it low. Yeah. We won't delve in too much. We won't delve in too much. You get me talking. I'll start. Give the old plan away. So Roman Sweden. Then I'm fighting Dan Curley on July the thirtieth. Okay. That's for the FBA. And then I'm fighting Josh Courtney on August the nineteenth. Um, for 3D Fight Club and then what, what happens is then they'll just roll on then and I'm not going to say no so I'm just going to keep going until either I can't breathe and my nose is completely like this or Mad. something's going on but I can't see there's something emotional in me that, that it's a bit hard to get across and um, it might explain a bit so and the reason why I do bare knuckle boxing and okay. I was going to say it but I didn't want to say it because it yeah I need, to, I need it to come out right so okay. my sister made me promise um, there's a conversation when Lola first died and my sister made me promise on Lola's name that I would never commit suicide. Okay, that is a big promise I made, yeah. Because with with, this, with the PTSD, I really what I told you at the start of the podcast, like all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. And sometimes it is hard to it is hard to cope and it is hard to process. So I'll be talking to you, or my manager will tell you, I'll be talking to him, and suddenly you'll be talking back to me. Like, it's like I'm not listening. I mean, it's not that I'm not listening. It's that the PTSD kicks in, and I'm just that much back in that zone. Really? Yeah, um, it's incredible. Um, so. I started doing mad things. So I said to my sister, right, if I can't take my own life, that doesn't mean that other people can't do or I can't do something that's... that's so I started working as a tree surgeon. Okay. Swinging from trees with chainsaws. Well, that's yeah, badly that's, dangerous. Yeah, 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 that's we'll do that. Dangerous, yeah, we'll yeah. do that. Ain't, that t- ain't a tree surgeon like the number one dangerous job or something? Like agriculture, and then that is right up there with... Yeah, kind of like I looked it up on Google and applied it. Oh, did you? Job, it? you know, oh, was it like similar that? To that? Similar to that. Similar to okay. That. Yeah. So I, 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 did, I did that and still do that. And then it's the same with the bare knuckle boxing. Like, and, and I've looked my mum in the eyes, yeah, this is my mum, and she fully understands it, and she got it straight away. If I was to die, yeah, in that ring, that is paradise. Like, wow. You, okay, I've got children, yeah. So this is what I mean, I need it to come out, right? It sounds selfish, yeah, because mm. my kids are my life, yeah. Yeah. But I don't like the thought of not knowing where Lola is and what's going on. So if I was to die, there's nothing for anyone to be like, oh, oh Jack Sars. It's, nah, no, nah, no, nah, it's not that. It's, yeah, he's wherever he is. He's over there. He's, he's over there together. There. They're looking, yeah, exactly, looking bro, after each other. Yeah, yeah, and that is God's honest. I actually get a little bit happy when, yeah. it, like, there would be no issue at all, man. Yeah. yeah. No issue. No problem. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Amazing. You know, this is this is uh, real crazy. And, again, I've never spoke about this on camera. And, I'd, like, again, I don't want people to think this is, like, a drug. And people who know will know. But have you ever heard of DMT? Yes. Have you ever done DMT? I want to do DMT, but I've never have because okay. because of my, my head and that I need to make sure whoever I get it off, it's the right stuff because it's not anything I'd want to be messing around yeah. with. So I, I won't go too much into detail about it, but for people who don't know what DMT is, I think it's called, like the, the proper name, and excuse me if I'm wrong, I think it's dimethyltryptamine, D E O M three or something like I'm that. I'm impressed at that, mate. I'm just trying to remember. It's a little bit like, so for people who don't know, it's, it's classed as a drug. But let me tell it's it's not a drug. It's not a drug. No one's ever died from it. Mm. It only lasts 10 to 15 minutes. And it, for me, was the... So I've done it, basically. I've, yeah. done, I've done it once, but I've done it twice in one session. And it's... And, and for again, I'm, I know you might know what it is, but yeah. just explaining for the, the wider public, it's, it's almost a... You're gone. Like, when, when I tell you, you take this thing and you're gone within five seconds, right. you smoke it. You smoke it. So it's, like, wrapped up in... You don't smoke it with tobacco. You smoke it with something else. Um, And it's basically, I believe, very, very similar, but stronger to ayahuasca, which for people who don't know, and if you don't know, that's the frog, the toad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, So I think it's stronger than the toad. And and, and what ayahuasca was, it was used in the, um, like, South America, I think, um, and has been used for many thousands of years in ritual rituals and things like that because of the experience it gives you right and um all i will say i can't go too much into my experience because experiences are very personal Mm. but all i would say is if you have any doubts about there being and i i I say this hopefully not look sounding crazy or anything like that but i say if you have any doubts about is there something Mm. after we pass and what is that like? I am now in no doubt that there is something there. I couldn't I couldn't say it's I don't think it's religious. Mm. I don't think it's Christian, I don't mm. think it's Islamic, I don't think yeah. it's in but there's something there. There's a higher power mm. where when we cross over, mm. we go to this place. And that put me in a and again, going back to I've done it a little bit after my mum passed. And I've only spoke to quite a few close people about the actual experience, but it put my head in a place where I was I was in no doubt 
that every everything will be all right. Okay. And it took me away from. We're all scared. To, uh, as much as I know, we've spoken. You can be the like the. the you you can you can say we're not scared to die or whatever, but, but there's always a doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of what if we die and there's nothing, mm-hmm. or there's or we, we it's just the unknown, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But it put me in a in a place, and I done it maybe near on two years ago, where I am now. I'm. St- it's still scary the prospect of yeah, death, yeah. but I know that when I cross over, mm-hmm. everything's going to be all right. Yeah. It was it was that deep, that and I would say that with my chest to anyone who's even wondering, thinking, mm-hmm. and. When it comes to DMT, um, I want, and, I, and my missus, like, I, I went home and I explained to my missus, that I've just had the best experience of my life. And mm-hmm. this, I, this is no bullshit. Mm-hmm. The best experience of my life because I have now seen, again, I, bro, no, it, people yeah, are going to think, think I'm crazy. No, no, I, it felt like I've seen the truth. Mm-hmm. And, and it's not like I had an experience that loads of other people haven't had or it, mine was very indifferent. Mm-hmm. It's so crazy how people's experiences, when they take this, mm. they all line up, they match up. Everyone sees the same kind I've of things, mm. which is crazy. And I would suggest anyone, anyone I love, anyone who's close to me, do it. Wow. But make sure you're in the right space before you do it. As in, make sure you're ready mm-hmm. for the questions you might go into it with mm-hmm. and for what you want to see and hope to see out of it. Okay. Because you've just got to be in the right mindset, basically. Mm-hmm. And... um I would say to you, mm-hmm. I would highly recommend to do it when you feel good and ready, like, you know. But it, as I say, it's it's that, like, if I could, like, my dad has always been a religious man okay. and brought me up in a Christian household. Mm-hmm. I never really gelled to it, and I, religion's never really been my thing, but my dad's kind of went through this sect of a Christian religion to that one, to this. He's always, he's, he's searching for something. yeah. yeah. And I've never told my dad I've done it. Mm-hmm. And he, he, granted, he probably won't be watching this, but <laughs> it's almost like I want to I want to sit my dad down and say, yeah. do this, I do want, this. I really want to try it, mate. Yeah. Really, I'm glad you spoke about it. And this is no, there's loads of bad things, but I've always wanted to try it, but I've always wanted to try the right one Yeah. and with the right people. Listen, like anything you can just go to someone and say, oh, can I have like, So it's, <laughs> you've got to be, you've got to be careful about how, how you do it. It's, it's this, this is the other thing, the scariest thing I've ever done. It's a scary. So it's, it's both. It's, it's, it's both. Okay. It's it's it's, and again, this is not to scare people away. Mm-hmm. This is perhaps more of a conversation just for me and you. It's, it's, I've never jumped off a cliff, never jumped out of an aeroplane, mm-hmm. but from people I've spoke to people who have, mm-hmm. and who have done it, mm-hmm. and it's the equivalent. It's it's taking a crazy leap when it's all happening. When you're kind of getting absorbed into this world or seeing yeah, what yeah. you're seeing, it's unreal. But what I will say is, it's not like a drug where you, or alcohol where you're or where like just right. you're not with it or like when you're pilled up and you're just yeah, mad you're that, yeah that, or know, yeah, yeah or you're you, you know sniff or anything like that mm. bro you go in here and you're crystal vision vision like me and you right. speaking right now crystal with your mind too your vision is better than here Ooh, if, if, if this is 4k though. it's 10k put it that way and this is again this yeah. isn't this isn't me speaking out of term and it's not like something that other people haven't experienced yeah. and this is not me taking or not me saying this, that I haven't experienced. This is my experiences. And yeah. it, and it's cr- it's so crazy. I, I kind of, it, it lights me up when I think about it because I I was I was so scared mm-hmm. about the prospect of it. Mm-hmm. And then hearing, obviously, it's like jumping off a cliff, this, that, the yeah. other. But having come through it, mm-hmm. and it, it, it really, I actually done it with my brother at the same time. And, it, and he had questions to ask, and I had questions to ask. And we just both come out of it. It's such a, it's such a, uplifting experience mm. and something that for some people i wouldn't say for me but i, I guess it did but for, for, for some people it can be a complete life changer right okay. in the fact that it's a humbling experience mm. and it really puts things into perspective and i guess at first when when i done it and some people ask me because they know there's this stigma around it that can be this crazy life-changing experience um people ask me and I, I was like i don't think it changed my life mm-hmm. But it definitely answered questions and it defi- it's definitely put things into perspective in certain ways. But now I, I think about it two years on, I think it has, you know, because it's just riding in the back of my head at all times. It's like, if something happens, we're okay. Yeah, yeah. And if I speak to someone like you with a story and, 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 and they need reassurance, I can say from my heart yeah. that things are going to be okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I need to do this. Yeah, you, you, you do. You do. Me and Dan, we're after this. Yeah. 
be ready. Be ready for it. Yeah. Be ready for it. And and also there's a thing, I know obviously you're a training man right now, but you're not meant to drink alcohol for a week before. And as you say, you need to you need to do it with the right people or get it from the right source. But as far as I'm aware, and I might be wrong, and I'm sure that there's a black market for everything, but there's shamans who take you through the process. So I can put you in touch. I can yeah. put you in touch, 100%. Yeah. So it's not like my mate just rocked up and he was like, hey, bro, we've got this, come let's <laughs> yeah, go, go do it behind a wheelie bin. Like, no, 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 no. You need to set the mood. It needs to be in the right atmosphere. We even done a, um, oh, what's the word? Uh, cleansing process okay. where the herbs have to be burnt and everything, right? Like, so all of these things really, and minds yeah, going. and then we meditated. We meditated for about half an hour before. It's it's all, it's, relax it's, all your mind yeah. It's a that. serious thing. It's a very serious thing. That's why I say like I just want people to know that this isn't okay. All right, on paper it's a drug, yeah. but it's not a drug. Mm -hmm. Just like a paracetamol might be there to aid you. Yeah, yeah. you wouldn't class that as cocaine or on the mm -hmm. same thing. In my head, this is this is an experience that someone or everyone I think should should do one time in their life, and especially people who have questions to ask mm -hmm. and 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 need certain reassurances. Um. And I think going back to uh, DMT also, um, I think, and again, if I'm speaking out of term, I'm, I'm really sorry, but from what I heard, there was a study done with people who with terminal illnesses, yep. um, whereas they gave them uh, DMT mm -hmm. and nearly all of them, it kind of, it, it took the fear of death away and it helped them, you wow. know, cross over yeah. and, and do their thing. It's it's a very big, impactful thing, but it's, um, as, as I say, to anyone who's thinking about doing it, do it, but make sure you're ready for it. Yeah. Don't just do it for doing it. I do the night before my fight. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't. But hear this, right? So, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you're out, mm -hmm. yeah? You're gone. You're not in this world. Like, bro, you're gone. Yeah. Don't even worry about thinking you're coming back conscious or you're going to mm -hmm. know what's going on. But once you come back, you, you kind of fade out of it. You kind of like, you pulse out of it. Within five minutes, you're back to normal. Exactly, no problem. Like, get in a car, drive home, no, no problem yeah, yeah. at all. No problem at all. Um, and that's what's amazing about it. Mm. It's like, you know, some people, they they do, they'll climb Mount Everest yeah. to, to, to become or f to, to get questions answered about themselves and mm -hmm. to get this buzz or to, I wouldn't say buzz because I don't want to put DMT in that category. Yeah. It's not the, the drug you take for a buzz. It's not a party drug. You don't take DMT yeah, and yeah, go to no. a party. That's, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's not the one. But, it's 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 really interesting that this powerful life changing experience is just one phone call away in some cases, yeah. and uh, perhaps three or four tokes of a, yeah, yeah. a spliff with it in mm -hmm. it. It's no, no like weed or anything, but you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like you don't have to travel as far as you think because half of it is 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 in here. Like what like what you're trying to look for. Yeah. Again, it, it's a personal just thing. To find it. You just need to find it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think DMT is very important. And I do want to dip back in at one point because it's, when I first done it, I was like, all right, I don't need to do that again because yeah. I know what I know. But I think there's there's more to be explored. Yeah, man. You have to give it a go with me, then you have to do it again. Yeah, bro, honestly. Yeah, man. It's, it's, it's a very, it's a, it feels sacred too when you're doing it. And I know yeah. people are thinking I'm going crazy, but just if you don't know what it is, Google it, have a look, just make your own assumptions and I don't blame you if you think Jamie's <laughs> a nuts or whatever, but people who know, know, and, and that's the main thing. Yeah. And as I say, if I would want my loved ones to do it, that's, that's a big Speaks statement. Volumes, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's, mm. it, it's one of those ones. So a long way round to say, if you ever get a chance to do it, do I think you should do it. Yeah, I think you should do it. Yeah. Um, I completely went off on a crazy tangent then. No, no. Where, oh. where were we? Like, oh, I think you was, uh, you were saying about, about your next fight. It's a big one. Oh, and where it can take you and yeah, uh, yeah. and things like that. Now, is this, is this you? Is this, is this like, are you now a bare knuckle boxer? This is, this is this your is future, me. tunnel and vision. It, yeah, and it's getting madder. So if you thought bare knuckle boxing was the most extreme violent sport you can do, it's not. We found another one. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So <laughs> it's, it's not. And you're, you're fully yeah, yeah. dedicated mm -hmm. to that too. Mm -hmm. Bro, like, I rate you because I'm you're dead. fearless, bro. Well, I'm That's not like, fearless. It's this not that though. Well, I at with my niece, um, with my, this is this is for Lola. So every time I have a little bit of scaredness or a bit of fear, just think Lola and yeah, it's th that sound yeah. doesn't it. Because yeah. the the other big thing is is she never got a chance to live her life here. So yeah. you think how many babies and young children, uh, young adults die unexpectedly, or whatever. They haven't had their chance to live to their potential. They haven't had their their chance to live a positive life. They haven't had a chance to do anything. So when I was messing around everything that started, I said, I just decided at one point, forget this, I've got to be positive because it's kind of a kick, it's kind of like, 
She's got his bad, isn't it? Because she never got a chance to live. If I do it negatively or just ruin my life, what, what fucking, that's, that's no good. Yeah. That's no good. If I'm going to do it, I need to do it positively. Definitely. Carry her name forward. And, I, and that's what I'm doing. It, I'm, I'll punch people's heads in positively, but everything I'm doing... It's for the cause. It's for the cause. Yeah. And it's positive. And it's, it's just wicked. It's just, I'm proud yeah. of myself now. It's, and to no, see my sister's eyes, yeah. Like, so she's got, um, she's got a shelf where, where she sits. And it's got Lola's ashes in like a teddy bear and, and it various other things. And now she's got like, my fight T-shirt that's over there and she's had this and she's had that and she's coming to my next fight. And she just to see, when I come back from the last fight and the hug I got off her and just how she was just, yeah, gonna, it's going to wow up, It's amazing. Man. And my little it's nephew's amazing. going, oh, you've done that for like, yeah, yeah. my uncle's fighting for Lola, yeah. you know what? It's just... Um, and, and the best thing is, bro, like you've got, you, you really deserve to be proud of yourself because you've built this from nothing. This is, this is your own doing, your own push, your own drive to those moments where people are coming up to you saying can't believe you've done this you've done yeah. that and do you know what I mean mm -hmm. it, bro honestly sometimes um, some self gratification is needed and you've done a lot and bro honestly I'm rooting for you man thank you after, very after much. hearing a story like this and sitting down I can tell you, you're a lovely guy when it comes to this you're fighting for a real cause thank this you. is this is real cause and I, I just want people to get behind you. And how how can people get behind you? How can we help this cause? Like, so we're ha we're, oh, we're setting up now a separate page um, with the charity link on. And there's so many different charities that try and do work with these cuddle cuts. Um, there's a guy on YouTube that sent me a link and I'm speaking to him at the moment. And just centralise it with one of these charities because the problem is giving it straight to Birmingham Children's Hospital. You don't. I don't ever know where. The, I don't know where whether it's actually going to be like one cut. Not that obviously to give them children's hospital money. It's good money that they, they need to use for a good cause. But I don't know if it's actually going to cut. Whereas okay. these cut cut charities are obviously all specialists in where to get them from, where you can get them, you know, at the right price or whatever. So we're going to centralise it with one um, charity, okay. and then there'll be another. Um, there'll be like a just giving or a, there's, there's some kind of charity page. Okay. With it all in. So by the time this, so let's say this goes live. A week or two from mm -hmm. here, will there be a link that people yeah, can yeah, find yeah, that they, they can follow one on yeah, kind yeah. of uh, donate? Yeah. And and all right, cool. So guys, you will be able to find that in the description. Go over. You've heard his story. It's it's definitely for a, an amazing cause. And how how does everyone else follow your journey? Like you know, obviously, if you're you're a boxing man now. Yeah, you're like a bare knuckle boxer. Like moment. like if people want to tickets, to, like because it's intriguing for me. Yeah, like yeah. this whole bare knuckle world, bro. I've yeah. got to come and see you fight. Yeah, you come in. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? One hundred percent. Um. But if like anyone else wants to get involved yeah. to, to to come and watch you fight, where, where do they? How do they do that? Um, it's on the team Lola um, Instagram page. Um, if I could send you a link and I don't know where you put that'll it be in the description too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not used to all this speaking. Yeah, to you yeah, yeah, there. yeah. yeah um, cool. They put my Instagram on there. It's, a t it's Team Lola Instagram. Um, everything could be on there. And then um, I'm part of a, a combat sports management company now, run by Dan. So there'll be all constant um, updates on there as well. So, okay. Yeah, it's, okay. It's mainly Instagram, mate. That, that's mainly that's mainly where. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. I, I I hope this is resonated with some people, and I, and I feel like some sometimes people are going through things that they can't. They, it's it's hard to see or find someone on the same wavelength or someone who seems like they're going through it. So, I hope this has helped people, and it just go, goes to show like if like if it takes something, not crazy but out of the box to yeah. kind of, you know, fight for your cause. Don't be scared to do it because you never know where it will take you. Uh, do it, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. Do make that jump. That is the biggest thing I could say to anyone, man. Like the amount of times I've been scared. Look how many things have happened to me. Even doing this today, the amount of times I'm going, oh, I can't be doing this on podcast. I'm not. Come on, man. I'm a. I'm not an estate boy. I'm not used to any of these. Uh, you just got to push through, do it, and and yeah, just break the norm, man. Yeah, just, yeah. Just do it, man. Just That's it. Do it. Jump That's off, it. Jump over that plane. Fight exactly. that box. Uh, As they say, it, there's no risk, no reward. You know. Yeah. And a, and a cr and I think we'll probably close on this, right? Yeah. Um, and it's uh, going back to it. It's something Ben Hatchett told me, and and yeah. something that kind of stuck with me. But if you want something enough, you you can you can make it happen you just, you've got to materialize it yeah. and what he said and he was quoting off someone who i don't know who he quoted off but basically if you see it here mm -hmm. you can hold it here oh that yeah okay and and it's so true you know yeah. you just got to want it enough yeah so um yeah with with that uh <laughs> yeah, yeah. with that kind of uh quote i think i just want to say a massive thank you once again well, for coming down you, and Josh. sharing this story this is the first time you have actually kind of opened up the full story yep. and um let us know and um I'm here supporting you, yeah. and uh, I want to come see you knock you're some there, man. dudes out, bruv. Yeah, like, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah you're there, man. You know you're what I mean? So yeah. if we can hook that up. And uh, yeah, once again, guys, check the links in the description. Yeah. So is that, uh, are they your only socials? Is there any? I've got Facebook, Instagram. I'll, I'll have to I'll send them all send over Send them all you. over, yeah. put them on the thing, that'd be fantastic. Cool, yeah, cool. Is right. there anything else you want to finish on? Or? Nah, I've just thank you very much for your time. Like, this is, like, every single opportunity that I'm given, I appreciate massively. That's what I need people to know as well, because... 
everything everyone's doing for me is huge. If some people might think it's a little thing, it's massive to me. And it's massive to my sister, my family, and more importantly, the author Lola Corsa. So thank yeah. you very much. Appreciate okay, now it's a wicked cause you're fighting for. Uh, Jack, listen, it's been amazing to speak yeah. to you. And uh, yeah, all the best in your future. Thank you very much. Nice one, awesome. bro. Wicked, wicked.